Our heroes discuss a bit before finding Roshi's Dragon Ball and join together on their quest. Back on Piccolo's flying iPod, he finds another Dragon Ball by emptying a lake. Goku and crew start their journey with him carrying a huge bundle of things for training purposes. But seriously, if you have seven days to save the world, and jogging is the fastest speed you're going to get, I'd hop on the goddamn bike. After a while, they finally get to Roshi's secret location, which isn't so secret anymore, as Goku knows his Chi-Chi fighting. <laughs> Chi-Chi! <laughs> oh, I love punching girls when they're distracted. That's actually how all my dates start. <laughs> Chi-Chi wins and then talks with Goku. She heard what happened to his grandfather and is sorry, and then says no one at home knows about her being a fighter. Well, considering we just saw her fight and know about Goku's grandfather, this makes this conversation completely pointless. And now, some techno! After enjoying some travel in green screen techno. Oh my god! The plot holes in this movie are so big, they're actually falling into them! Our heroes come across Yamcha, who says he'll help them out for a price. They refuse and stay in the hole till nighttime. Now all we need are marshmallows and a ghost story. We have no marshmallows, but I do have a story. 2,000 years ago, the Earth was nearly destroyed. It's like the movie just skipped over having a heroic character and added nothing but comedic sidekicks. Who am I supposed to take seriously in this film? Roshi starts a story, but gets fed up with Yamcha. He jumps out of the hole and bribes him to use his drilling equipment because Bulma sensed a Dragon Ball nearby. Convenient? No? And before you can say slapstick horrific, Yamcha is now part of the gang. Why stop there, movie? You could have more than four comedic sidekicks. How about Pauly Shore? Or Rob Schneider? I'm sure they're available. Back with Airsick Piccolo, he donates his blood to charge up his monster. <laughs> After that, we see our group has now traveled to Mount Doom in search of the Dragon Balls. <laughs> Wait, wait, I know what that noise means. Wacky alert! <laughs> oh, Yamcha, you slay me. Some cross between a putty and an orc pop up as Goku and Roshi kick some ass. It's discovered that only the lava can destroy them, so Goku starts throwing them in, also creating a bridge. He fights the Dragon Ball when... <laughs> Bitch, please. So they talk a bit, and Roshi travels to an old temple. He chit chats with some other old guys about some stuff, and ooh, chicks fighting. Now just add some mud, and I think we'll have ourselves a movie! The evil chick from before grabs some of Chi Chi's blood for an unknown reason, as Bulma and Yamcha actually start hitting it off. Back at the temple, Yoshi trains Goku in the mystic art of Hokey Pokey. You stick your left foot in, you stick your left foot out. You stick your right foot in, and you shake it all about. Do you understand, Goku? Roshi goes on to explain about the Kamehameha, and leaves Goku to practice. He tries for a bit, but then realizes that Chi-Chi has been spying on him. She sees that he's been struggling, so she offers an incentive. There are five unlit torches in this courtyard. You're five paces away from me. Every time you light a torch, you get to take one step closer me. What happens after I light all five torches? <clears throat> then you'll be standing right next to me. Where I can reach you. I, legendary warrior Goku, could try to light all five torches set next to you. Or... <laughs> after a bit, Goku finally lights all the torches and Chi-Chi tells him to put them out for some kinky Dragon Ball sex. If it goes by Dragon Ball logic, that means 20 minutes of talking and FIVE SECONDS OF ACTION! ALRIGHT! Oh! Roshi does some praying at the role game club as Bulma wakes up to find Chi-Chi. Uh oh! You know what that means! Isn't there a curfew in this temple? WHAT?! 
but it turns out that Goku didn't get his Dragon Balls rubbed, as an imposter Chi-Chi makes off with the Dragon Balls. Chi-Chi meets up with Chi-Chi, and a fight breaks out. Goku gets to them first, but knocks out the wrong one. The villainous escapes, but not before shooting Goku and knocking him out. He's alive. I barely... By his acting skills, I can barely tell! Goku wakes up, and the whole gang head down to Dragon Ball Temple for the big showdown. Piccolo starts the ceremony, as it destroys the Earth and creates numerous phallic pillars. Our heroes, running on pure plot convenience, run off the cliff and use their rocket boosters. Roshi intervenes, but gets knocked out as the jeep crashes. Goku, finally in proper garb, confronts Piccolo. I'm glad to have you join me. You will bear witness to my glory when I compel Shen Long to grant me the power to rule this diseased rock. I will defeat Ozaru, and I'm here to destroy you. People are going to think I'm awesome now. They're going to call me Goku, not Gopu. And I'm going to win first place in that science fair. Uh! But plans go sour, and it is revealed that Goku is Uzaru, as the Eclipse transforms him into a shitty computer graphic. Ozaru, they have a Dragon Ball. Bring it to me! <clears throat> well, thankfully, Goku's clothes are retardedly stretchy. Some fighting occurs, Uzaru thrashes around a bit, until finally choking an injured Roshi. Roshi says some be-yourself bullshit, and then dies, as Goku changes back. Oh my god, I just had the worst dream ever, I just dreamt I was in this shitty movie and all- Oh god, oh no, oh god, oh no, oh god, oh no, oh god, oh no, oh Goku and Piccolo then start duking it out, with blue and red fireballs, as Bulma and Villainous battle inside. Bulma throws a bike, but she dodges. Just as she's about to get blasted, Yamcha saves the day. Now let's wrap this up. Blue effect! Red effect! Dead! Oh, poor Master Roshi! I know, I use the, um, Dragon Balls to wish him back and stuff. Wouldn't you rather have your grandpa back? Uh, nah, he farts a lot and stuff. So Roshi's alive again. They set up the sequel as Goku meets back up with Chi Chi. They bicker and bicker until finding it out in the ring. You know, like all good couples do. Berlin and Dracona. Evolution. At an hour and 13 minutes, this has been the shortest movie we've done, but it still leaves quite an impression. Film done! Well, that was Dragon Ball Evolution, and... Yeah. This has the same problem as Max Payne, and that it's a silly film that plans to drag people in simply on its title. It really should have been called by its real name. The Wacky Japanese <laughs> Demographic At least that would have been truthful. I'm Taylor M. And I'm Dill. And, and until next time, whoever smelt it, dealt it! <laughs>